All right, welcome back to another video. So I wanted to create a follow-up video uh, regarding sessions because I know it might be a little bit confusing. So I want to show you another simple example. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a fake uh, authentication method. All we're going to do is just create an auth route. And it's just going to allow the user to make a post request with like a username and password. And we'll just make it so that if they have both uh, both parameters present in the request body, then we'll authenticate them. We're not going to be using a database at all because I just want to do this just to showcase how exactly uh, sessions really are used in real applications. So let's go ahead and create a router. So uh, const uh, let's import the router. And then we'll create the router. And then we'll export that. And let me go into the index.js file and we'll import the router. So I'll call it auth route. And it'll be slash routes slash auth. And we'll register it down here, similar to how we've done it with our previous routes. Okay, so pass an auth route. There we go. Let's go ahead and set up a simple post request. So router dot post. So this will be the login route. So when we call it, we'll have to call slash API slash V1 slash auth slash login. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go into Postman. We're going to make a post request to this endpoint and we're going to pass in a username and password. Okay. So we're going to have to actually pass it in as a request body. So I will get those two pieces of information from request.body. And all we're going to do, like I said, is we're just going to check to see if both username and password are truthy. We're not going to go ahead and call a database. We're not going to compare the password. We're not going to do any, like, you know, hashing. We're just going to show a simple example of how a login mechanism could work. Okay. So let's just say, for example, we assume that the username and password are all correct. Well, the next step is when it comes to authentication is, well, the first thing that we have to do is obviously compare the username and password, check to see if the username is found in the database. And then if it is, check to see if the password is the same as what they provided. Okay, that's the first step when it comes to authentication. Uh, the, the very last step usually is making sure that we can actually uh, properly serialize the logged in user into the session so we can actually know if the user is logged in or not, okay? So typically this consists of uh, just pretty much serializing it into um, like some kind of string. And then whenever we make subsequent requests, we can deserialize it and check to see if the username, uh, if the username and password are, uh, are truthy or not. Now, since it's just a fake authentication me me mechanism, right? All I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and do this. So if the username and password are both truthy, Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to modify the session. So we're going to do request.session. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and attach a new property called user. And we're just going to go ahead and add the username right there. Okay, uh, now another thing that we'll have to do is um, we'll also check to see, before we do this, let me actually do this. We'll check to see if request.session that user is truthy. If it is, we'll just send a response back and say, you are already logged in. Okay. Now this will be truthy if the user object is already been created and attached to the session object, which in other words, if the session object has been modified, similar to how we modified the session when we modified uh, it in the last episode where we had our cart system. So if this user property does not exist, then we'll go ahead and attach it. And then we'll go ahead and do response and send request.session. Okay. Uh, so actually, let me do this. Instead of actually sending this string back, I'll just send request.session.user. Okay. So if username and password is truthy, we'll check if the user property is available in the session object. If it is, that means the user is authenticated. If it isn't, We'll go ahead and attach the user the user uh, property to the session object, okay? And we'll pass in the username uh, property into the user object, and we'll just send it back as a response. 
Okay. And if the username and password are not present, we'll just go ahead and just send a 400. Well, actually, we'll send a 401. Okay. Let's go ahead and test this out. So I click send. Uh, are we running our application? Not yet. Let me go ahead and run our application. Okay. So if I go ahead, if I click send, it's going to give me a 401. And that's because we did not provide username and password. So let's go ahead and go into our request body. Let's pass in a username. And you can see now when I go ahead and log in, it's going to go ahead and the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to run through this logic. Okay, you can see that, well, since it's our first request, um, the user does not exist. So we're going to go ahead and just attach a user object to the session object. And we get this cookie right over here. Let me actually go ahead and do this. Let me actually clear this again. Let me click send. And we get a new cookie. Okay, now if I were to call this endpoint again, it's going to go ahead and send back uh, request.session.user. So now we are inside this block over here because we went through this logic. If request.session.user is truthy, then what happens is we just send back the user object, which you can see that it's being sent back right over here. Okay. If we were to clear this cookie, if I click send, it's going to go ahead and send us back the whole session object. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense with what's going on with the uh, with, with, with with what's going on with uh, modifying the session. Now let's go ahead and create a middleware that's going to take care of checking to see if the user is authenticated. So if the user is not logged in, then we're not going to allow them to visit our routes. Okay, so how is that going to work? So uh, in order for the user to be authenticated, they must visit this login route first. Once they visit the login route, they're going to be quote unquote authenticated. And I'm no, notice how I'm using that term loosely because again, this is just a, a, a fake mechanism of authentication. The whole purpose here is to show you how the flow works. When we actually get into Passport, you'll understand a lot more, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and create a simple middleware. So what we'll do is we'll go inside index.js and we'll go ahead and call app.use. We're gonna go ahead and get the request response and next parameters okay and what we're going to do is we're just going to check to see if rec.session.user is truthy if it's truthy we'll call the next uh function okay which again is going to call the next middleware if you didn't see my middleware episode go ahead and check that out but this next function will just literally go down the chain of middleware so this will go to the next middleware function to call Okay, uh, and then if the user is not logged in, we'll just go ahead and send a 401, which just means unauthorized. Let me make sure to remove the curly braces. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and test this out. So right now, uh, we do have our cookie. Okay, let's go ahead and clear the cookie right now. And let me go ahead and try to access the groceries route. You're going to see it gives me a 401 unauthorized. And the reason why is because it hits this middleware, right? If rec.session.user is, is truthy, it will then call next. So it will go to the next function, which would be this. Uh, let me actually do this. Let me actually remove this as well because we're not using it anymore. So it would call this function and send back the grocery list. If I try to call any endpoint right now, it's protected because we have that middleware. Okay, even if I try to call the markets endpoint, it's not going to work. Okay, now let's go ahead and log in. Oh, whoops. Let's go ahead and log in. Okay. Uh, now, here's one Here's one problem. We also need to make sure that we are not... Uh, we, we need to make sure we're not protecting the login route. Because right now, if we try to actually call the login route, it's also going to just give us back unauthorized. So we need to actually do this. We're going to go ahead and register this middleware. Uh, we're going to register the auth route before this middleware. 
You can also do this. You can actually also do this. Let me actually move this back down here. Instead of doing it globally, you can actually just do it at the router level. And I'll actually do that because we haven't covered that yet. So what I can do is I can go inside my groceries.js file and I can reference the router object and then call use. And I can just pass this in like that. And I can do the same for the markets router as well. And now if I try to access, let me go back to the groceries route. It's going to give us, it's going to give us an unauthorized. If I go to markets, it's going to give us unauthorized. But if I try to go ahead and log in, if I call the login route with a post request method, it's going to actually log us in. So that route is not protected. Okay. Because we have enabled this middleware for the router level. So we just logged in. We have a cookie. Let's go ahead and visit all of the routes that are protected. So now we're able to access the groceries route. We're able to access uh, the route parameter when we pass in milk. We can go ahead and access markets as well. And we can also access the shopping slash cart. Uh, actually, no, it's groceries slash shopping cart. We can also do that as well. Okay, so um, yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to just uh, simple, the, the flow of authentication. This is pretty much how we would protect our routes. Now, obviously, the logic here is not going to be the same when you have a real authentication strategy. Okay, now what we're going to do is in order for this to actually fully work, in order for us to actually get a full on authentication strategy, we're going to actually need to do a couple things. One, we need to actually set up a database because we need to actually create users, which we're going to do in the next episode. We're going to set up a database connection with MongoDB. We're going to then create a user in that database. And then we're going to modify our login route. So that way, instead of just, you know, having this fake logic, we're going to actually call the database, uh, validate the username, validate the password. And if everything's good, what we're going to do is we're going to like, let the user stay authenticated. We're going to modify the session and say, hey, look, uh, you are authenticated. Okay. Now there's other stuff that we'll also have to talk about too, such as how do we make sure that we can keep the user logged in? Because right now, if we were to restart the server, let's say if I were to destroy the server right now. Okay. And if I go ahead and if I reference this route again, even when, even though I have a cookie, right? It's still saying unauthorized. And the reason why is because we've just restarted the server and all of our sessions were saved in memory. Okay. Because they were all saved in memory. Um, this rec.session.user property is undefined. So in order for us to actually access this route, we actually need to call the login route again. Okay. All of this stuff, I will teach you how to do that without having to worry about passport at all in the next couple of episodes. But in the next episode, I'm going to show you how, do we can, how we can set up a database connection. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.